So uh, yes, uh, another Les Paul Wednesday, and uh, today we've got an Ebony Studio from 2007. So let's have a listen to it and then we'll look round our favourite account. Let's go. starting on the noisy or distorted uh, setting with the bridge pickup. I'm just checking there's no push-pull stuff going on with these. So, uh, right, uh, flat out and yeah, starting the bridge. <laughs> And starting with the bridge again. Thank <laughs> you. 
Und dann ist es weg. and let's have a look why. A lovely Gibson Les Paul studio from 2007 and why would it be particularly my type of guitar? Because quite frankly, because it's been around the block, it's weathered, run in, has experience, more than likely gigged. Uh, and weirdly, for all of the marks around the body, of which there are plenty, um, the frets are largely unmarked. In fact, very much unmarked. Uh, and they are in surprisingly fresh order. So, let's have a look and see what we get. So, sure, we've got the sunscreen logo, tells you it's last pawn, the short shot cover usually tells you it's a studio, and it certainly is a studio. Uh, the, I think that this was, the, I think 2007 will just be pre tribute days, would it? Anyway. It's a studio. Uh, around the back, of course, we've got the Gibson Deluxe tuning pegs with the green keys. And the D key is just slightly kinky. You may be able to see that. And uh, But it's not bad enough to change it. And it works just absolutely fine. And again, and again I'm going to tell you again, if you get one like that, do not be tempted, although probably with the Gibson it might be alright, but all the same, don't be tempted to try and straighten it, because the chances are it will just snap. Uh, so, yes, so even though that it's uh, a little bit, um, you know, uh, the newness has worn off, let's say, uh, the important thing for me is always this area here, uh, where the neck uh, meets the head and of course the area where the neck meets the body also. So what we've got, we've got a mahogany neck that's mated uh, beautifully into a mahogany body. The neck has got a rosewood fingerboard, rather nice, and uh, acrylic trapezoid inlays to emulate mother of pearl. Uh, the mahogany body of course has got a maple cap as always and there's plenty, there's plenty of sounds of uh, a busy life going on there. I'm, I'm hoping that I can get it into the right light so that you can see everything that's gone on. But you know, really, don't let it put you off. Don't let that put you off. Don't let that put you off. Because let's face it, when you're looking at it like this, you can't tell anyway. And it is so liberating when you've got a guitar that you don't have to worry about putting a mark on. Because, oh, because otherwise, your head's filmed with, oh, God, I don't want to, you know, like make a, a new guitar would absolutely destroy me. Anyway, uh, so yes, the maple cap has got plenty of marks on it. There is one little bump in the neck just here, but you cannot feel it when you're playing. Certainly not. Uh, so hardware-wise, uh, toggle switch in the usual place. We've got the 490R in the neck here. That's popping out roughly just shy of eight. Uh, the 498, which is what they come supplied with, the studios. Uh, 498T is popping out about 13 or something like that, even more than 13. It's the original stop tail piece and tunematic bridge. And you've got uh, four speed knobs, uh, two volumes up, two tones down, and my favorite, well, one of my favorite features, a scratch plate, lovely scratch plate. Uh, exhaust pipe in the usual place, and um, and so and so. Even the and the, I do like the predictability of Gibsons generally, uh, and studios particularly, um, because although although it's you know been used, uh, that it plays in it plays. Truly impeccably. The st it was so easy to restring and set up, and the string height on the 12th is roughly 1mm, so it's just so easy to get along with. And uh, 
uh, so you saw me uh, trying the pots to see if there's any push pull thing, and the reason that I tried that was because when I've got this off the cavity control plate, the pots inside are mounted onto one of those square aluminium uh, plates that they have. Not the not the PCB uh, quick connect disconnect, but the and. So I just wanted to see if there was anything, you know, if there was any reason for that. But I think it was just the way that they were doing them at the time. Uh, anyway, yes, like I say, there's a few, a few odds and subs on it, a few little wumps and bumps, and it's a maple cap which benefits from both uh, uh, wear uh, and you know, very obvious signs of use, uh, and um, also happily. Uh, a few paint striations around the around the knob area. So that is absolutely it for me, and they really are a top tip for me because at least when. So the thing about them is, is that if you when you're on stage, if you're playing with this and you this way on a black one, it will, it's always going to look great. And um, and of course, because they've got a bit of wear on them, they're always going to come in a little bit cheaper, aren't they? So, uh, happy days. Thanks all ever so much for tuning in. As always, I shall look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Adios, amigos. Ta-ra.